The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Diagnostic Trading Hour with your host, Daryl Martin. Martin. All right, folks, welcome on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. I am your host, Daryl Martin, and uh, going through the markets right now. If you have any questions, by the way, feel free to give me a call. You can reach me at 1 877 927 6648. Again, that's 1 877 927 6648. All right, so let's check out a, a few different things going on. We got the market right now. We have the S&P up nearly eight points. We have the Nasdaq up 34. We have the Dow up 46, and we have the Russell up six. Gold is down about five points right now with copper up almost one percent. Silver is flat on the day, and uh, corn is just up a couple points. So uh, looking over at soybeans, we got it uh, down 14 points. We got oil. Uh, let's see, down 17, we have natural gas, pretty flat on the day, which is not a, a normal thing for oil, and uh, or I mean natural gas. <laughs> then we got the euro dollar down 34 pips, pound dollar up 97, Aussie dollar up 29, US yen is down at 91 pips right now. We got the US Canadian up 55 after all those reports this morning, did a nice strangle on those. And we got the U.S. franc is uh, basically flat, just up three pips. King dollar right now leading the way, showing strength against all the pairs except for the yen. And uh, so that sort of sums up where the markets are at. Let's go ahead and look at the news that came out and uh, check it out real quick. Uh, let's see here. Let me pull this up. And it uh, looks like, what do we got on the news? Well, last night... We had a couple different trades go off. We had a trade balance come out of China. We also had the RBA uh, monetary policy statement. Not a big move on that one. I went and did a strangle and um, pulled it, you know, literally a few minutes later. Really just was not the best move on that one. And then going on over and looking at um, other trades you could have done, you, like I said, you had the several were coming out of China, but it's really hard to trade that, obviously. And uh, it's just good to be aware of it. EU Economic Summit in day two right now. Uh, the big trades, the ones that told you, like, hey, the, this is the main one you want to be focusing on this morning, was the USD Canadian dollar, so the USD CAD. And um, on the USD CAD there, it uh, set up perfectly. And uh, you can see right over here, basically, this is right where the news came out, okay? And I went in, I did a uh, strangle at 1.0027 on Nadex. And then I went down and I sold the uh, .9978 and uh, had an order to take profit when it hit either price on both. So basically what I did is I said a uh, take profit order to sell this one out if it went up and it hit, I, I set it at 43, set an order to buy this one back if it comes down and hits 57. Well, in less than a minute, I know it looks sort of weird on this chart, but in less than a minute it flew up, hit her profit, literally from three minutes from entry to exit, 100% return on investment. So a very, very cool trade. Got to love those USD CAD trades when you got a whole bunch of them wind up at the same time. And you didn't really have any reports coming out after it to uh, jack with it. Sometimes when you got those reports, but there's other bigger reports coming out afterwards, it can uh, you know dampen the effect. Sort of like the uh, Aussie dollar the other night, whenever the main reports were coming out on the euro, it moved, but it really didn't go real far, simply because everybody was waiting to see uh, what came out of the EU, and that's when everything moved yesterday, uh, mainly on the press conference more than anything. And um, then there was an RSI divergence, and it hit a deviation level. Notice our strikes were right at deviations. And uh, we post these every day. You can check them out right inside the members area there. And um, you can get access to the deviations. And you can plot them on your charts. And let's see here. I'll show them to you. But, uh, you know, so you're not randomly just picking strikes to see, you know, what happens. And uh, over here, so we go down to USD CAD, and we can see 0.9939. And then 1.00, you know, 1.3 on the upside. But we, see, where were we? We were at 1.002 right before the announcement, like right at that 0.7 mark, okay? So what we did is we went down to 0.9976. We went up, okay, to 1.0031. So right on those areas. And we were able to get a little bit tighter on both sides. 
which is great. So we're right inside a 0.7 deviation move up, 0.7 deviation move down, because we were right in the middle of them. That gave us the perfect strike to go in and do on the strangle. RSI divergence happened where the RSI dropped while the price was making new highs. Said, hey, be aware of a pullback. That further signified the need to take profit on the trade. It did pull back. It went ahead and bounced back up at the moment. And uh, basically it's doing a little swing trade right now between one and one and a half deviations. And uh, there's a lot of trades like that that set up that you can take advantage of. And I like to go through those with you. And just let you know, hey, here's what to look out for. And um, then you can go in and you can use the deviations to help you actually trade them. And the nice thing is we know what's a trade. USD CAD. Why? Because there's a lot of reports happening at once on the dollar and the Canadian at the same time. And we also know when to trade it. When the report comes out, all those reports come out at the same time at 830. And we don't have to be directional. We don't have to pick. Is it going to be good news or bad news? We just do a strangle. And uh, if it moves fast, great. We're in, we're out, we take profit. If it doesn't move, we're in, we're out, we take a small loss. Don't hold it to expiration. Okay? And um, so it's a very, very simple, very fun trade to do. Let's go ahead and see what we got coming up. Um, Sunday night, don't really have any major impact report coming out. Uh, going into Monday morning, uh, got Euro group meetings happening, um, but they're sort of all day, and they'll be held in Brussels, and it'll include the Euro group president, finance ministers from the you know EU, and the uh, central bank, and all that stuff. And so they'll be going over. They'll have you know formal statements covered, and um, they'll also release some objectives after the meetings are concluded. So when that meeting does get concluded, be watching because it could impact the markets. Monday overall looks like it's going to be a slow day. We don't really have a lot of news. Uh, we have some medium impact stuff, but uh, mainly it's people talking. So, um, and we also have uh, you know the bank holiday over in China. Okay, so uh, they got their spring festival going on, and uh, with their spring festival, um, they you know closed down. The forex brokers will usually remain open anyway, but the banks, the stock markets over there, closed down because of that schedule. So you want to be aware of that, that that does also impact the you know the entire market because you have obviously um, one of the uh, top largest economies in the entire planet is uh, closed. <laughs> so we're going over to uh, let's go ahead and check out Tuesday, see what's lining up on the Frank. We're going to have the CPI numbers. So you got the USD uh, Swiss there, USD Frank coming out CPI three fifteen on Tuesday morning that you can go into. And uh, then their chairman, um, Chairman Jordan, is going to be speaking. His, uh, let's see, Thomas Jordan is his name. He'll be doing some little speech. And uh, let's see here, trying to see if there's any details about it. But he's just speaking in Geneva. So he'll be talking, and that could have a little impact. Uh, there'll be a Bank of England inflation letter. No time scheduled. Let's see, you can't really trade on it. And then um, in Canada, you're going to have um, Deputy uh, Governor Tiff um, McLean is going to be talking along with uh, Carney, it looks like, uh, due to testify. So they're doing a basically a whole meeting where they're going into talks. talk. So that could actually be a, a moving event on the USD CAD. But it's not really a number again. So it's more of like what they're saying. It could oscillate very easily. And I was trying to see, I know, Draghi, anytime he talks, usually we get movement. <laughs> so he's the, you know, the Bernanke, basically, of Europe. And 10.30, he'll be talking on Tuesday. So beyond that, we don't have a whole lot more going on. Again, a pretty quiet Tuesday. Um, you know, every other report, you know, either low or medium impact. China is still closed on Tuesday, and um, it'll be closed on Wednesday. Just going through. Oh my gosh, Thursday. All right, I guess they're open for business on Friday. So, uh, <laughs> but I, or I guess that Friday is their Saturday, so maybe it doesn't even matter. But uh, yeah, basically, you got China closed for the week. Okay. And then the following Monday, there on the 18th, will be closed. Um, so, because President's Day will be coming up on February 18th. Okay. All right. So, what else do we have? I mean, just look, trying to find something next week to drive the market. Um, let's see. There'll be a press conference on Thursday out of Japan. Have some monetary policy statements, some interest rates on Wednesday night, Thursday morning. So, the US yen could easily have some movement uh, Wednesday night, Thursday. So, that could be something you could be looking for. And then the U.S. is going to have unemployment claims. And that's really the week. I mean, we've got retail sales, I guess, in Britain. So on Friday, you could have a report at 4.30, retail sales, if you're up that uh, bright and early in the morning trading. And um, then you got a University of Michigan Consumer Senate report here in the U.S. next Friday. So next week's looking to be just a really quiet week week on the news front. And um, so that'll make, uh, you know, 
make for an interesting week in trading, to say the least. Uh, we, it's sort of weird. We're so used to having the federal announcements. We're just going to have to pay attention to the charts. So imagine that. Um, <laughs> so, of course, that doesn't mean that we're not going to have some politician step out and say something stupid and, you know, make everything go nuts. But, uh, you know, it'd be sort of nice. It'd be, you know, it's almost a little weird, but nice to just focus on the charts and not have to worry about every little news report coming out every 15 seconds. So use that to your advantage and uh, it ought to make things a little smoother and uh, can have some fun with it. So, you know, we're really at some major points right now. Either we're going to see this entire thing just take off to the moon or we're going to start seeing some major volatility to the downside. But the market has to have a reason either way. Uh, and I'm not saying a complete reason. I'm just saying that order flow has got to start happening one way or another. And uh, or grab it, man. Stay here for an entire month. If it does, great. Just go in and trade the intraday swings. So pretty simple. Just trade the half deviation, to, you know, settlement, settlement to half deviation marks. And uh, that can be a pretty easy strategy as well. All right, so that wraps up right there, the movement on that. Let's go ahead and look at a few things. Let me pull up a few different charts for you. And we'll scroll through and we'll just look at where they're at. I'm going to pull up uh, just a 10-minute bar charts over here. And uh, I mean to see, I mean, look at this right here. A little scalper's paradise right there on the S&P 500. Just bouncing up and down three points over and over. And uh, one of the things that uh, I talk about that you can take advantage of is you can go in, you can use the spread scanner, okay? And this is sort of a cool way if you're a scalper. And a lot of you I know this does not apply to. But if you're a scalper, okay, and you could go in and you could sell a spread. And then you find one that's going to expire maybe near the end of the day, so you have all data, you know, basically play with the spread. And you can go in and sell the spread, and you want to find one that's as cheap as possible, Okay. And, you know, looking for like maybe a 15, 15 or so. So you may have to choose the, the three. You know, there might be a four o'clock one that comes up here in a little bit. You can take advantage of. Uh, but if you sell the spread, then what you can do is you can buy the S&P. So you go in and let's say you do a, you know, 15, 15 to 15.05 spread. All right. And let's say you do five of those right now. That costs you 150 bucks. It'll give you about two hours of scalping. If the market starts crashing on you. You're okay. You're completely hedged. Okay, so you're short on this 1515 down to 1505 spread right here. It will cover you. And then what you do is as, when the market dips, you buy, you grab, a, you know, a few ticks. Dips, you grab a few ticks. Okay, if you can grab 150 bucks worth, which is basically three points or 12 ticks total, then you've covered the cost of your spread. Now your spread is a risk, you know, in a sense, a risk free trade. Um, you still are risking, of course, the money you've made, but you're, uh, you know, as far as the money you came in with, you are uh, not risking any of the original uh, capital there. And then you can just go in and just scalp it as much as you want. And then you can start going for one and two ticks over and over and just wait for it to oscillate, close it, let it drop down, oscillate, close it. And you're talking, you know, 1250 25 bucks over and over and over again. And uh, without stressing out, because if it flies against you, like I said, you're hedged. So, uh, just a cool way, cool thought. Um, you can do the same thing on oil and gold and everything else. All right, stay right there. We'll be right back after this break. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Wealth Management. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportions of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley believes a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what an asset allocation and a Morgan Stanley Wealth Management financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Wealth Management, LLC. Member SIPC. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. 
McEwen Mining is a high-growth, mid-tier producer in the Americas with a market capitalization of $1 billion. Experienced mining executive Rob McEwen, as chairman, CEO, and president, owns 25% of the outstanding shares of McEwen Mining and has put in place an ambitious business plan with the goal of qualifying for inclusion in the S&P 500 by 2015. With $70 million in cash and liquid assets as of the end of 2012 and completely debt-free, McEwen Mining is poised for growth. Production in 2013 is forecasted to grow at 24%, reaching 130,000 gold equivalent ounces. And over the next three years, McEwen Mining projects that their production will increase to 290,000 gold equivalent ounces, almost a three-fold increase from last year's totals. If you'd like to find out more about McEwen Mining, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE or TSX under the symbol MUX. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. All right, folks, welcome on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. Going on through and looking at a few different things. And what we're seeing right now is the S&P went up, hit that 0.7, bouncing back and forth, talked about a strategy where you could go in and you could possibly look at taking advantage of doing a few different things like that, like scalping on it. And uh, let's see, here me, there we go. We have the uh, NASDAQ, literally moved up to the 1, and then 1.5 deviation, and just stopped. So uh, looking for a potential reversal on this trade. We do have a little RSI divergence going on on here. And uh, right here, you can see, making the lower low, making the higher high. I mean, it's a small divergence, but it's there. And um, so I've got a little bit of divergence on there, looking at a potential short on the trade. Wouldn't be long on this trade, uh, but right now it's pretty flat. I think uh, most of the pit boys are out and uh, getting out with all the storm stuff going on. Uh, checking out over on the Dow. So if we look at the Dow right here, what you can see is the market flew on up, hesitated at the 0.7, pulled back to the 0.5, and now it's just I, you know, basically hanging out right there. So same thing, those deviation levels very helpful for taking profit, tightening stops, and uh, you know everything else. So like one of the things I've been talking about is you know you look for the bar that closes above. Okay, so if we look at this right here, if we have 13,964. And um, our close on this trade is 13.964, so it's right at it. It's not above it. This one actually does close above it. So um, actually, it opens above it. This one closes above it right here. So we're able to tighten our stop right there if we're long. And then that gives us the ability to lock in profits on a long trade. So it can be really, really helpful. And um, then going over here, let's uh, flip around, check out the uh, Russell. And on the Russell we got right here, we got the same thing, moving up to 0.7 deviation. And uh, really just oscillating right there. Hadn't even closed above the 0.7. We definitely did get the close above the 0.5. And uh, right there. 
So you could have uh, tightened stops on that one. You could, of course, tighten stops whenever you want to. But uh, if you want to give yourself the most room, then that would be a way to do it. And sometimes you may look cross uh, index. You may see on one index, hey, it's hit it. So I'm going to tighten my stops on all of them. And that is one of the methods that you can use. It's just a little more complex to be hopping around. And I'm using 10-minute bars when I'm using the deviations to tighten my stops. Now, if we go over here, we check out gold. Gold has been uh, pretty range-bound most of the day. And uh, you can see it hasn't really even hit a half a deviation either way. So pretty quiet on the gold front. Uh, we can go over, let's check out a few of the uh, pairs. We'll go to Aussie dollar. And um, Aussie did finally decide to have some movement. It just took it a while. All right. So um, right there, you got that. And then um, basically what happened was we were, I was looking at divergences last night and checking out some different plays. But it did decide to finally make a move. Um, it just, like I said, it took it all day to get around to it. And um, so let's see, what do we have? Last night, I'll pull that up real quick. We had the report that came out um, on the Aussie dollar. It was the uh, monetary policy statement. It came out at 7.30. Didn't really see anything that was impressive. I mean, it came down. It went up. And, uh, you know, it's looking for just a chance to keep moving. Now, if you were long on this and you actually were willing to hold it, you were in it long in the thing, you'd have to have been like in a daily binary um, in order to be able to trade this thing. You would have to have been trading to the deviation to have any kind of potential risk reward on the trade. But um, it moved up right here. So you got that move, where it, see how it broke through the level, and then right here, it broke through this level right there, right through the one deviation mark, and then it couldn't really go any further, lost steam, and you would have been out of the trade right there when it uh, broke the low of this bar. So, uh, but again, very helpful, I mean, full deviation moves. Going over, we can check out, let's see, what did our euro dollar do today? And uh, let's see here. All right. This area is moved down to negative 0.5 deviation. And right here we can see that. If I can zoom in on here, show it a little better for you. There we go. So I had the exact same thing, the bar that closed below it. See, if we went and we got in on the bar that touched it, we got out really soon, probably close below it. I mean, still may, you know, be soon, but we did get a solid half deviation mark and got a good area to tighten our stops. And um, let me see here. Moving on over, looking at, we'll check out the uh, franc. See how the dollar franc did. And uh, we can notice it also did a half deviation move on the day. Pretty quiet day uh, for that currency pair as well. And let's see here, what do we get on? We got a uh, low on 0 0.9153, 0 0.9161. So we were able to tighten our stop right there. So uh, anyways, over and over again, uh, deviations helping you trade better, helping you manage your profit. And uh, if you're trading on Nadex or futures or Forex, um, in any of the cases, that can definitely help you out. Be right back after this break. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Just recently on December 28th, Market Insight subscribers were advised to go along the QQQ, the NASDAQ 100 ETF on December 28th at 63.91. And only two trading days later, after a huge jump in the markets, Market Insight subscribers were advised to sell the QQQ at 66.64 for a $2.73 or 4.27% profit to start off 2013. At the same time, Tom O'Brien had advised his clients looking for a more leveraged trade that they could 
would have initiated a position in the QLD, the ProShares Ultra QQQ ETF, and over the same two trading days, Market Insights subscribers were able to lock in a $4.48 profit or an 8.47% gain in just one trade. Get your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during your free trial and pay nothing. Don't miss out on the next great trading opportunity in 2013. Act today. If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intra-week trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, folks, welcome on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. And uh, we're just going through a, a few different things right now. Checking out the markets and uh, looking at the USD franc. That one worked out great. We hop on over. We can check out the uh, pound dollar. And we went through several of the different pairs. And you can notice it over and over and over again. Uh, but we had some massive, massive moves on the pound dollar that uh, you could have taken advantage of. You can see right here it broke through and it closed above. There's your tight stop. That actually gave you room for that pullback, right? Went on over. Closed above right there. You tighten that stop right here. And then we go on over here, and uh, let me see on this. And uh, that's sort of weird. What is that? Um, okay, so we got that going on, and let me see here. Oh, okay, there we go. Got that taken care of. Sorry about that. Uh, and we got the uh, pound dollar moving on up. And let's see. See it right there. Could have tightened it again when it broke through this level. And then we got a close finally right here. Tightened it on up. Didn't get to tighten it up with the two deviation. Came on back. And you were able to tighten the stop. And finally out right there. Okay. So a uh, pretty good day on that trade. And, um, you know, you could have, again, just using that to help manage your stops. I mean, you had a lot of long signals going on. Even if you got t stopped out at all, you still had another entry um, that you could have taken advantage of on the trade and uh, got back in. Usually what I do is when it pulls back, let's say if it got you like right here, you can get in one tick above this. It goes up. You have another entry, one tick above there. It's moving on up. And, you know, you got those stops. You keep moving them. So it's right there, got an entry, moves on up. So, uh you know, it would have been a great entry, and then you're tightening your stop. You're walking in profit all the way through it, okay? And so we can go through, and now let's look at, we'll just check out corn. It's been a really quiet day in corn. And um, 
But even with that, you know, we had that pop up overnight. And uh, you can see right here, I mean, it flew, just flew on up, started coming back down this morning, okay? And uh, but like I said, it just flew on up overnight right there. And on its way back down, so you'd be looking for the closes below, okay? Because you hit that one deviation move, close below, close below, close below, and then you're out right here. So your entry being when it breaks uh, the tick right there would be your entry price. So you'd get in on uh, this bar right here because when it broke the low of that bar. So that's your short. And then you, your first stop's going to be up here when you first get in. And then you got you just keep tightening it, tightening it, tightening it, and then you're out of the trade. And I wouldn't really be playing you know, all the way back up. That's a good, nice move. You caught almost a full deviation on the entire move. Looking on over at soybeans, and uh, let's see here, that is not, oh, that's the wrong soybean contract. Let's see here. Pull that up, come on. Well, I'll pull up soybeans after the next commercial break. All right, <laughs> we'll get that all set up. Check out natural gas, and on natural gas, uh, we got a half deviation move. It's a very quiet day uh, for natural gas overall. But if you were buying into this move, then you got your uh, Titan stop right on that bar right there. You basically got kicked out right on the next bar. And if you were doing any kind of reversal, like if you, uh, right here you could have seen, you know, where, where would this reversal come from? Okay, so right there, you see that RSI. And then you go here and check out the higher high, okay? So there's your RSI divergence. And then you expect basically a drop whenever you see that RSI divergence. And so right there, we get a nice drop on the trade. So if that's happening, then when it goes down, it closes below the next deviation. Tighten the stop. Comes back up. Boom, you're out of the trade. But you can get in. Like I said, as soon as you see that, what you're looking for is a, a close below the previous bar. So you actually get that on this bar right here. Okay? And you set your stop loss at the high. So that way you have a very, very tight stop right here. So there's your RSI, there's your stop loss, there's your entry, here's your initial take profit zone. As soon as it closes below this, then you're able to go in and tighten the stop. And uh, so we tighten the stop right here, moves down, and like I said, we get out of the trade right there. And you make a nice little profit. So uh, natural gas, I mean, that's a good profit trade right there. Now what about oil? Because oil's been really moving. So uh, let's go ahead and check this out. And... Uh, you know, got a nice half, I mean, it'll move up. And the thing is, I say your oil's are moving. I mean, 30 ticks is, you know, a lot of money on oil. So that's a few hundred bucks. So if you're in on oil and we're looking for the uh, same setup, look at this right here. Okay, so we got the RSI divergence happening. Right here at the top, right when it's hitting that deviation, especially. Love that. All right, so we got the RSI divergence right here again. All right, so we're looking, remember what I just said right here? We're looking to get in when it breaks the low of the bar after that divergence, okay? And I mean, there's there's another RSI divergence. I mean, you got a lot of RSI divergences going on, but you got another RSI divergence like right there. Might even be a more clear divergence, you could say. So if we'll drag that one right. If it'll let me get all of the bar. Come on, give it to me. All right, well I'm just gonna do another one. All right, we'll do that one right there. And uh, so any one of these, you know, it lines right up. So you go and you're basically waiting for a break below the previous bar. So you get that uh, break right there on this bar. So once that break happens, you go and you choose your highest bar. There's your highest bar. You move it on down. You're waiting for a close below a deviation level, such as a settlement or a 0.5 or a 1 or 0.7 or whatever. And so there's your stop uh, where you tighten your stop. You're still in the trade. And uh, you've went in about 97.37. You've You're already up. Let's see, down to 95.83. So, uh, let's see here. What was that price again? 96.37. And uh, so that gives you, what, 37 plus 17, um, you know, 43, 44 pips, whatever, right there. Um, at that point, you've locked in about $270 on the trade. It's moving down. If you wanted to, if you're like, you know what, that's too much money, I don't want to give it all back. You could always just decide to move it down to, like, say, you know, it has that last pullback right there and say, okay, I'm going to tighten my stop down here because I just don't want to give back another, uh, what would that be? I mean, it would be quite a bit. Let's see here, 97, uh, 95, 83. 
up to ninety six twenty. So yeah, I mean that's another like thirty, you know, several hundred dollars you could be giving back if it does go back up. I mean you're still profitable no matter what on that trade you get in right there, but this is you know a few hundred bucks more in your pocket on just one oil contract. And uh, now at the same time, oil is pretty volatile, sort of scary. And uh, so you may choose to not want to go in and take on that kind of risk. And you're you know afraid of getting margin called and stopped out, and maybe you just don't have the money to trade oil. So, I mean, or maybe you do have the money, but you still don't want to take on that kind of risk. That's where you're going to hop on over. And and if you look at uh, Nadex right here on the homepage, tfnn.com, click on Nadex, okay? And then click on our products, and then click on demo account. And you put in your username, first name, last name, phone number, email address, hit apply for demo. They'll send you an email with your password. If you need to know how to get that demo extended, just email me. I'll let you know. But uh, they'll give you two weeks. And uh, create an account, $100 from start to funded. And uh, you can actually start trading live. And you can trade oil. You can trade gold. You can trade silver, copper, natural gas, the S&P E-mini, the Dow, the Russell, um, the NASDAQ, you can trade uh, corn, soybeans, you can trade, let's see, euro dollar, pound dollar, Aussie dollar, euro yen, pound yen, Aus, or, uh, US yen, US franc, and US Canadian. So, I mean, you have a wide variety of markets that you can actually take advantage of, but with all of them, you have 100% defined risk and you can't be stopped out. So, if you go in here and you actually sold one of the oil spreads up here and the market flew up, and let's say, you know, you took on a risk of, you know, couple hundred bucks which is nothing in oil that's a couple points okay um it's 20 cents okay <laughs> so you take on a risk of you know 20 cents on there and it flies up against you the most you can lose is a couple hundred bucks all right you can't lose if you can't move a point on you in five seconds you just lost a thousand dollars which can happen in oil so flies on up there you're still down but here's the beautiful thing you don't it's not it's not just that you limit your risk okay and some people go oh well the bid ass spread or I don't know about the premium stuff, and it's not, you know, don't get lost in the, the, the trees, okay? See the forest, all right? You can't get stopped out. So the other guy who, maybe he had a one tick bit ass spread, maybe you had a three or four tick bit ass spread, okay? Whatever, who cares? You know what? If it moved up 10 cents, he lost 100 bucks, or if it moves up 30 cents, he lost 300 bucks, or if it gapped and flew a dollar, he lost 1,000 bucks. We've seen this thing move several dollars in a matter of a minute or less, they get three grand on one contract. You know what you're down? Say a couple hundred bucks, okay? And uh, so that alone ought to be a, a good reason. Now, you're down, he's down and he's out. You're just down, you're not out, okay? So you can hear the Rocky theme going in the background. Get up, you know? And so you get to stay in the trade. Until the bell rings, you're still in. And uh, so if it comes on back in your direction, then you can actually still profit on the trade. And that's... I mean, that's why I love trading them. You're not trading with that massive fear of things knowing you on small spikes. And uh, there's just, a, you know, there's a lot of different ways to bring it together. Um, so, you know, there's different ways to put it together. I have, let's see here. Looking at a few other things. Let me check it out. We got, uh, let's look at silver. I'll pull silver up on here. And we'll go in, and uh, you can look at this. Let's see. So, do we see an RSI? Maybe we do. Maybe we don't. Let's go ahead and check them out. And I was, you know, you know, like right here. See this? You don't have an RSI divergence. You really didn't have a heads up on this trade of an RSI divergence right there. Okay. You don't have one here. I mean, it's low or low. You know, low or low, over and over again. So right there. Okay. And even right there, we have, now here's where we start having an RSI divergence. So that's this is what you're looking for. You're really trying to find any clues of a divergence. So right here, like what I can see is right there and right there. Okay? I'm looking for that divergence. When I see that divergence, that means I expect the market to start turning around. So that gives me my go long signal. All right? So, when can I go long? Well, when it breaks the high of the previous bar. I call this basically an apex reversal. So, right there, we're going long on the trade. All right. We're setting our stop where? Right here. Where do we actually buy? Okay, let's get that specific. All right. So, one tick above the high 
of this bar. Okay, so right there. All right. So like one tick above the high of that bar. We get in on this bar. We have our stop loss. Like you know, one maybe two ticks. I mean, if you don't account for that spread on the trade. Our target is definitely going to be you know going for the, at least the deviation level. We're looking for a close above it. Okay, boom, we got a close above it. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to tighten our stop. We go over here and uh, stops right there. So on that bar right there, we get stopped out. So we got an entry at 45. We got an exit at uh, 590. That's that's a nice profitable trade on silver. So nice, quick, easy trade that you can take advantage of. All right, so that gives us a, so, you know, just trying to give you different examples on how to use the deviations. It makes life a lot easier. Um, and again, these deviations are huge. So it's not just the pattern, it's not just the stop loss, but it's also how you manage the profit because so many traders give it all back every day. And you need to know how far does the market expect the market to move. And it usually moves to one of these levels and then it'll stop and turn around or stop and go flat. And that's why I like to tighten stops when it closes above one of them. And um, it's not that it's perfect, but it is a system that you can do consistently and works pretty well. Uh, let's see here. We go in. Let's look at what other pair? Um, U.S. Yen. Have we covered the U.S. Yen today? All right. So let's pull that one up. And uh, wow, look at that. All right. So first thing, let's find ourselves a simple uh, RSI. See if we can find an RSI divergence. Because I'm betting that we can. I see one right there. Zoom in on it, make it a little easier to see it. Okay, and it's, I mean, it's pretty tight. Let's see, what are we getting on this? Uh, RSI 15, 15.9, 15.12. So right here, is, like I said, it's a little harder to see, but it's there. So you got this, and, you know, right here you're getting basically, you know, lower lows. So you can, if you want to trace it all the way back to that bar, right there even, right here. Okay. So there's our RSI divergence. Looking for a apex reversal. So we got our right here. What we're looking for is we're basically calling this our A, calling this our P for our pivot, calling this our E for our entry. Okay. So there is our entry price right here. And then here is our pivot level. So this is where we're putting our stop. All right. And now we're looking for a move on up. So we do. We get a close right there above it. If we tighten our stop, get stopped out on that trade. Okay. While well, that's happening, do we see a divergence? Nope. So we didn't get a clue to go the other way yet, unless we're using um, a different uh, method. So I have a few different methods I'm using at the same time, but this gives you just one example. But this gave you a nice quick pop of uh, almost a full deviation. I mean, you were able to capture about a 0.7 deviation move to the upside there. And uh, with completely defined entry, take profit, and trailing stop. Uh, you know, at least stop and, and a trailing stop potential if we kept going all at the same time. So, a uh, pretty sweet uh, layup. All right, let's stay right there. We'll be right back after this break. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors, employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. 
David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to try out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page at TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program. The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern, on TFNN. Tom O'Brien's weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, has helped subscribers for over 10 years navigate the high-risk world of exploring and producing gold companies. And now's a great time to sign up for a free month-long trial to see the kind of insight that Tom delivers for his subscribers on a weekly basis. Every Monday, Tom O'Brien issues a quick update on the metal market, giving you his take on the HUI, XAU, GLD, dollar bonds, and much more. Tom follows Monday's update with a full gold report, which is delivered to subscribers Tuesday afternoon with detailed coverage of 24 separate gold or metal stocks, as well as another 10 to 15 stocks that he lets you know are on his potential watch list. Get your month-long free trial to the Gold Report today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Don't spend another year navigating the metal markets on your own. Act early in 2013 and make the most of your gold and metal market investments. Join David White as he keeps you up to date on the latest tech stocks while he uses his Power Law Vector Indicator to identify the best trades. The Power Trading Hour, next on TFNN. All right, folks, welcome on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. And it's like we have a caller right now on the line. And I got John from Philly. You got a question about natural gas. How's it going, John? How you doing, Daryl? Doing great, man. Uh, thanks for taking the call, Daryl. I wanted yeah. to present you with this question. I want to lay it on you and, and ask if you could uh, just review what your response would be, and I'll, I'll hang up. I've got a bad connection. Um. I'm, uh, I've taken a position as a futures trader okay. in uh, April natural gas, and that's traded at $3.35 last. Now, what I'll tell you, uh, the way I trade is this. I, I only trade stuff that I can come up with a, a strong uh, fundamental view on that blends with the technicals, and I take larger positions. Um, I only enter when I can define my risk real tight, and then if I get a winner, then I'll, you know, then I'll trade around things. So that's kind of the way I operate now. With April Natural Gas, I've just entered at three thirty-five. I will tell you, I'm thinking, um, regardless of what it does right here today, I'm thinking maybe it goes down lowest. 325, maybe it actually bottomed today, but something here or down to 325. And that in the next month or two, it rallies towards like 370. So that's what I'm playing for as a futures trader, as a position trader. Okay. And I'm wondering if you could just go through 
the Nadex platform and what you do. And with that sort of kind of outlook, that sort of roadmap in mind, if you can then select the kind of trades that would fit with that outlook, given the way that you trade, I'd like to hear you go through that so I could kind of see that as an example so I get to learn your, um, your platform better. Okay. Uh, I wish it was my platform, <laughs> but uh, yeah, the Nadex platform. Uh, the, the one issue is Nadex is really built for short-term traders. You have the weekly binaries, but you know I barely ever trade those. It's really made for trading on a daily basis. Uh -huh. So uh, if you have an outlook of where it's going to be in one, two, or three weeks, that isn't going to um, help you a whole lot in Nadex. It's more of like, what's your outlook today? Are you there? Uh, un understood. And okay. my, 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 my question to you is, given the roadmap I've laid out, what you would look for, if you could just go through the, the, uh, uh, the instruments, uh, I'd like to see you go through the process of selecting the instruments, uh, playing that April net gas from the long side. That's, that's, that's the question I've got for you. Okay, uh, let me see, because I think natural gas may be closed on Nadex right now, because it closes when the pit closes, which, I, oh, we may have a little bit more time. Let's see here, I'll pull it up. Let's see how much time I got left. All right, so if we go over here. And, let's and Dale, see. while you do that, I want to hang up and scrutinize the screen as you're doing it so I can from <laughs> that. All right. Sounds like a plan. All right. Thanks so much. Yep. All right. So to wrap up right here, we just have literally like a minute left in the show. But uh, what I'd do is I'd go in and I would pull up the market I wanted to trade. So I'd go say, you know, I want to do natural gas. And if I want to go long, I'd click the buy side. And then I'd be able to see on here... Right now, the ones for the current day are out of the money, but there's an $11 risk with a $385 profit potential on the trade. So uh, you have to give me a call back tomorrow, John, a little bit earlier, and uh, we'll go through it in more detail. All right, everybody have a great day, and I uh, look forward to, uh, I guess not tomorrow, but uh, Monday, and I'll talk to you then.